what's good everybody it's your boys or jackson back on another video let's go um today we're going to be back into a video called how beyond scared straight failed to prevent kids from being in jail or staying out of trouble something like that um so we're gonna get into it it's by patrick cc but first i know you guys are like what happened to the hair yeah it's gone it's gone um it's gone because i wanted to new start yeah that's just what i want if y'all want if y'all want still the same goal 100 subscribers it's still the same goal we get to 100 subscribers and then i'll 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 start doing like how you say it tutorials on how to how to twist your hair how to make your locks because i did everything myself but it is what it is let's get right into the video beyond scared straight is easily one of the most controversial shows in history parents of troubled youth pay for their children to tour the inside of a prison or county jail so they can be exposed to the dark reality of life behind bars when they arrive they meet with real inmates who strike fear into them with threats with the goal being to prevent today's teenagers from becoming tomorrow's prisoners but their exposure therapy techniques are definitely questionable why is wrong you dog Chill out. You are starting in the wrong way. It's Kool Aid. We put this on just like you. Lick your lips. Now stick your hand in that Kool Aid. Just stick it in there. Now take your finger. Just do this to the bottom one. Come here. I kiss you. You orange flavor mother. That's the. You bet me. That's loud. You a hard. You want to hold? Let me go. You want to try me? Try me? Yeah, try me. I want you to try me. I want you to try me. Try. Now there's no doubt that the show is entertaining and has given us some pretty hilarious moments over the years. However, our entertainment is at the expense of children's suffering. And the craziest part is, it has been proven on multiple occasions that Scared Straight doesn't work. In fact, it might actually increase their chances of becoming lifelong criminals. A lot of people don't realize that Scared Straight is not just a television show on A&E. It's a program that has been implemented all Hold on, give me a second. Give me a second. I'm sick right now, so bear with me for a minute. Okay. Although it doesn't work, and it's proven it doesn't work by, I guess, studies and scientists and whatever else, Although it doesn't work like that, I think it mostly falls on the parents. The parenting gotta be garbage for the kids to be acting up like that. Give me a second. I'm trying to turn on my, my other light because I don't I don't like this light right here. There we go. So it it, it falls on the parents. The parenting, but that's just my take. I don't know why it's like that all over the united states for the past 50 years and the reason it got so popular was based on just one alleged successful experiment scared straight was the name of a television documentary released in 1978 produced by arnold shapiro it was critically acclaimed won an academy award and even won an emmy see they're gonna put lipstick on your lips earrings in your ear and i do swishing your ass up and down these tears hustling cigarettes for your man What did I say, mother? You're here for two hours. You belong to us. Hold on, what happened? I was eating. I missed it. Hustling cigarettes with your man. What did I say? What did I say, mother? You're here for two hours. You belong to us for two hours. The film documented youth offenders who visited Rahway State Prison in New Jersey. They met with inmates with the goal of being so scared of going to prison that they went on to live a straight, 
or crime-free life. The documentary claimed that 80 to 90 percent of the 8,000 children who visited Rahway's program would go on to remain law-abiding citizens afterwards. The mm. popularity and surprisingly positive results led to more than 30 states rapidly implementing the program. No further questions were asked, jails and prisons all over the country saw one documentary and thought they had a solution to all of their youth offender problems. The program's validity was immediately questioned by juvenile delinquency professionals, but that didn't stop it from becoming popular. The original documentary was followed by Scared Straight, Another Story, in 1980, also produced by Arnold Shapiro. This one was just a dramatic film. The subjects were actors who did scripted reenactments of their petty crimes, which led them to entering the Scared Straight program, being screamed at and then feeling reformed after a couple overnights in the prison. Then in 1987, Scared Straight 10 years later aired. I'll be your host for Scared Straight 10 years later. A fascinating update on what's happened to the kids and the convicts filmed a decade ago. What I steal I need and I want. That's embarrassing. <laughs> 10 years ago. Um, yeah, I did that. I did that to look good. Now the difference is I want to. Hey, bro. I don't know if y'all ever had this, bro. But get the get the green apple gatorade and uh, it's the green one, the the green the green uh gatorade, and then get the red gatorade and then mix it, bro. It's life changing, bro. Life changing. Period. Inspire. I mean, I think I think gatorade altogether needs to come out with like a mixed flavor. Start mixing flavors, yeah. Oh, they start need to, they need to start working with uh working with uh what you call it? Not prime. Then they start working with what's the other one called? It's prime, Gatorade, Powerade, and it's uh body armor. They need to start working with body armor, bro. Oh yeah. I look good, but I like to pay for what I take. We got to see the original 1978 crew, and they all explained how much the program changed their life for the better. The second half of the documentary introduced a new group of troubled teenagers. After their trip to Rahway State Prison, the documentary claimed that all 17 of the youth offenders were crime-free just three months after their visit. Then MTV connected with Shapiro for another sequel, Scared Straight 99. This documentary was potentially the most raw and shocking of them all. The prisoners were threatening these kids to levels we had never seen before. One inmate made a kid hold his pocket as he walked around the cell. This was highly regarded as one of the best out of the series, and people still genuinely believe this was an effective form of therapy for youth offenders. Which makes sense when you consider the societal standard during this time period. Mental health issues that are widely known today Hold my pocket thing, bro. Which is automatically in my head. America Dad. <laughs> America Dad just pulls up in my head. I'm like, bro, what? Hey, that was a funny episode to me. Wasn't like two episodes of Stan. Stan had to be the. I guess the, the big dog. I don't know. I don't know. It was the principal's like you know b it was his his b right the one he had you know you know made his head in prison yeah that that yeah Stan. <laughs> had not been vigorously studied. Mental health as a whole wasn't taken as seriously as it is now. Plus, it was a lot more common for parents to use tough love and physical punishment to discipline their children. These programs were seen as an extremely cheap and convenient solution to a very complex problem that is juvenile delinquency. But where Scared Straight received renowned media attention was when they released their 20 years later special. They claimed that of the 17 original 1978 children, only one of them became a career criminal. The 95% success rate shocked news publications. Scared Straight was a miracle solution. They used 17 people's stories for 20 years to justify this entire program around the United States. But the popular A&E series you all know and love didn't come until 2011 and was produced by the same man, Arnold Chip. Okay. Yeah. I was about to say, like, 
with all this all this going on, I only remember the 2011. I never heard of all the other documentaries. But it's clearly gone on and it's clearly been like established throughout the years. No matter what. It didn't, it didn't matter. It was gonna be established and it was just gonna be a amount, amount of time where it became a TV series. So that makes sense. I remember it. I remember watching Beyond Scare Street the first time. I I think I got into a fight at school and then I almost got the police called on me or something like that. I got into a fight and then they said that I could have got the police called on me and I could have been in juvie. And then my mom was like you need to you need to make better choices and you, she was talking to me about it she was talking to me and then she said i'm not gonna punish you this time about about it but we're gonna watch tv together and then we watched tv and then this came on and then she said this could happen to you and i said i'm not doing that <laughs> I, I'm not doing that. I'm I'm okay. I am okay. So uh yeah, needless to say, uh young Zilla did uh did kind of straighten up a little bit. A little bit, not too much, because I still got into fights. I literally got into a fight every single school year. Yeah, fair. Not a, not a single school year I didn't get into a fight. I got into a fight first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, sophomore, I know, that's junior, junior and senior year. I can name, I can, I remember each fight I had too. <laughs> that's sad. That's, that's very sad. Oh, let's continue. Piro. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. I want to tell you about the easiest way to get in on some NBA action with Underdog Fantasy and their Pick'em game. Just find your favorite player, or any player really, pick higher everything your pick. Patch is a been a wealthy show that program all day. So by the time most of us became aware of Scared Straight, it had already been a well-seasoned program all over the United States for 30 plus years. Beyond Scared Straight was a TV show that documented the experiences of troubled children as they embarked on a forced tour of a maximum security prison or jail. During the tours, inmates and officers would go to the greatest lengths, screaming, locking them in cells, putting lipstick on them, ruffling them what up, the anything they could do to shock the children and make them terrified of going to prison in hopes that it would steer them clear of a life of crime. What's up? You like to fight, homie? That's what you like to do, huh? You little bitch. You's a bitch, homie. You's a pop tart. I see right through you, homie. Stop. You better not stop. You, you better. You, 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 you want to do it? Man, you a hoe. You want to do it? You want to do it? Try me. Try you smirk at me. He says he don't know. You can't speak up, can you? Are you smoking Why can't you speak up? Fact, bitch, you hold this. You drop it, I smack the out of you. I don't give a about going. This was the most staggering and horrific scared straight program we had ever seen, and people loved it. The show's premiere. Okay, so the reason why it didn't work is because of uh, some dickheads that just wanted more views. You know. Sounds a lot like today's society. Let me, yeah, I, I'm not trying to throw no shade, but again, we got Aiden Ross, which I said I refuse to even put his name in my mouth again, but like, with the shit that he's done, like, he's the easiest example. Aiden Ross, Nico, and a couple of other people. It's like, you know, it seemed that y'all do just do shit for views, but that's just that's just my take. That's just my take. Three point seven million views total. And beyond straight in that in that like season basically, and he kept on doing it. He wanted the same thing over and over and over and over and over again to get this much or more 
Yeah, I, I see the business aspect, but then I don't see the actual, the actual improvement aspect working. But that's just my thought. That's just me being smart. Here alone attracted a staggering 3.7 million viewers, making it the most watched original series debut in the network's history. The undeniable success of Beyond Scared Straight led them to producing 83 episodes. No, I was a I was a black kid. I was a big black kid that was bigger than everybody in the all Mexican school. I didn't see another black kid until the sixth grade. No, the fifth grade when two black girls joined my class. And then after that, it just it, it just escalated into more black people. And so I went to high school and then I just seen a majority of black people and all the black people had like taken over a whole area of the campus. I don't know how to explain it. Unless you guys like live in this area. But yeah. Episodes across nine seasons spanning from 2011 until 2015. But the most eye opening realization about this show is that the Scared Straight program was proven by the federal government not to work. Since the release of the original film, Many justice institutions and criminal prevention professionals have thoroughly studied the effects of the program to determine if it actually works. Surprisingly, numerous studies have shown that the scared straight method can actually do more harm than good. The most mm. significant study was conducted by the U.S. Department of Justice after the release of the original film. They examined the outcomes of nine controlled trials conducted from 1967 to 1992. This involved over 900 children with the average age of 15 to 17 who participated in scared straight like programs in eight different states. Also, each study was conducted by a different research team. Every one of these studies also had a control group that did not attend a Scared Straight program. So they were comparing youth offenders who went to Scared Straight versus youth offenders who didn't attend one and measured their likeliness to become a re-offender. The study found no evidence to support the effectiveness of Scared Straight in similar programs. In fact, all analysis showed that involvement in these programs increased measures of crime and delinquency. In nearly every one of the nine studies, the group who went to Scared Straight had a higher rate of re-offense than the group who didn't go. After this comprehensive study was published, many other were conducted with different test subjects, different age groups, and different crimes. Many of the studies would produce very similar results. In 1997, University of Maryland researchers completed a report for Congress on the evidence for various crime prevention strategies. The researchers had no problem listing Scared Straight as one of the programs that doesn't work. To make things worse, these programs could potentially violate federal law. In 2002, which was nine years before the first A&E episode aired, the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention in Washington informed all states that scared straight programs or similar programs may violate the separation requirement of the JJDP Act. According to the act, it is mandatory that juvenile offenders and non-offenders should not be detained or confined in any institution where they may have sight or sound contact with adult offenders. In short, it's illegal to have kids in jail with adults, which makes mm. this clip even harder to watch. A terrified nine-year-old boy dangled like a raw piece of meat in front of a pack of prisoners. His crime, stealing pocket change from his mom and lying. I think we can all agree that traumatizing a child to this degree for stealing pocket change is insane. Then filming it, editing it, and putting it out into the world is next level. One time they even showed these children a- Y'all gonna give that little kid a PTSD. <laughs> Y'all gave him PTSD. They gonna be scared to even take money from people at that point, bro. That's crazy. Body and describe to them what their parents would experience if they go to jail and die while on the inside. These programs typically break these children down. They start crying, are mortified, and just want to go home. The sad part- they even showed these children a body and bro what bro what nah they're wild for that bro ah they straight jail for that one bro what they showed them a dead body 
they showed him a deceased male in the prison to show them what it will be like if their parents sent them, well, if they actions sent them into prison. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna put air quotes around prison, but like their actions sent them to prison. This is what could ultimately end up to. I don't think that's something they just show little kids though. I don't think that's something to show show kids, period. But Okay, that's that's crazy. Describe to them what their parents would experience if they go to jail and die while on the inside. These programs typically break these children no, down. They start crying, are mortified, and just want to go home. The sad part is their home life is probably rough as well. On the surface, the concept behind these scared straight programs makes sense. Troubled kids are so afraid of prison that they change their ways to avoid such a dark future. However, there are multiple examples that say otherwise. Toby Keith Johnson was first featured on the show on season three, episode 13. He was quiet and didn't show any emotion. The guards tried to break him down and make him feel bad about his choices, but he didn't budge. At the end, when the parents reunite with the children, Toby's mother didn't show up. Eight months later, Toby was featured on the show again. This time, he was an inmate. He was incarcerated for allegations of assaulting his mom. He got out two years later on parole, but sadly, continued a life of crime. He was arrested multiple times on meth and gun charges, but the most recent one was the worst of them all. In August of 2020, he was arrested for imprisoning a 25-year-old woman and making threats of harm, with Johnson forcefully grabbing the victim by the throat, choking her, and violently throwing her to the ground. The aggression... See, that's the Ezra Miller shit. Ezra Miller. That's the Ezra Miller shit, bro. I think that was just a little racist, bro. <laughs> Just because they're two white people that kidnapped and held children or people hostage. Well, it says that she was a 25 year old. Ezra Miller was different. The girl was like a minor or so. Like 16, 17. Somewhere around there, bro. Yeah, bro. I think Ezra Miller is still worse, but. But that's crazy. Continued with it, even going as far. Right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta read this. He then proceeded to allegedly damage her cell phone and told her if she calls for help, he would get a knife and gut her. Hmm. No. As far as Toby threatening her with a knife, law enforcement would report like, visible signs like of bruising on the victim's worse. neck. I think it's pretty obvious that Scared Straight had no positive effect on Toby whatsoever. Franklin Morris made his premiere on A&E in 2012. At the time of filming, he was living in Baltimore with his mother, Dana. In an emotional episode, Dana revealed the extent of Franklin's school suspensions, stating that she couldn't even begin to give a precise number. Franklin himself shared a nonchalant attitude towards his mother's concern, saying, My mother says I'm even going to end up dead or in jail. I really don't care no mind. At the young age of 14, Franklin participated in the program, already having convictions for gambling and vandalism. One of the incidents that landed Franklin a spot on the show saw Franklin and his friends wreak havoc in a store, knocking items off the shelves and vandalizing a local shop. Years after his time on the show, Franklin Morris became one of three teenagers who met a grim fate near a playground in North Baltimore. Alongside a 19-year-old and a 17-year-old, Franklin was found, shot in the head, and pronounced dead at the scene. I thought about going to the jail was it really wasn't no big deal. The reset Oop. program, it didn't change me. It really don't feel no different. Since the majority of the show's participants were children at the time, it's hard to find the long-term results of their lives. However, based on what I found, it seems like a lot of them went on to live regular lives. If you search what happened to so-and-so from Beyond Scared Straight, most of what you find is clickbait leading you to an Instagram page of someone who we can't confirm was actually on the show. So if the program has been proven to True. be ineffective, 
through various extensive studies across the past 30 years, why did they do a show about it? Well, that's because the guy who has built his entire career from this program, Arnold Shapiro, is fully convinced that this program is a good thing. Shapiro says that all the extensive studies are totally irrelevant because- You know, honestly, they should call this the Incredible Hulk, bro. You can't tell me that, well, you guys can't see it, but like the red and the green, like what it mix, when it mixes, well, like the if you freeze the the green apple and you put the red on top of it, oh my god, it really does look like the Incredible Hulk. There's already alcoholic drink called it, so should be called the Incredible Hulk Gatorade, bro. That will get people. Mm. Ching cha ching. Because they were done from 1967 to 1999. He also said that only the academic community believes proper counseling for youth offenders works. If society had the money or resources to do that, that would be great if every kid could have years of counseling, but it's not realistic. It would be interesting mm -hmm. if A&E used the millions of profits from the show to get these youth offenders counseling, since society doesn't have the money, right? Shapiro shrugs off the criticism of Scared Straight. There's every variation. It works for some, it doesn't work for some. But you can say that about any program that exists. Exists. Shapiro That's thinks true. that as long as it works for some, then it justifies the program. And since the program exists, he is happy profiting off of it. He has openly admitted that the children they decide to be on the show are not the ones that they think will change, but rather the ones with the best personality. It really is based on their personalities and what happens with them. We didn't have any belief that Brandon T. from Michigan, who stood up to the officers and just kind of had a meltdown, would ever change. Even when the tour was over, he got thrown out, but we still picked him because it was so explosive, and we never saw anything like that before or since. Although, other kids have stood up to officers. It's amazing. When I went through high school or even college, you never thought you would disrespect a teacher or an authority figure, especially somebody in law enforcement. But these kids have no fear. It's crucial to question whether the oh. <clears throat> jail wasn't fit for me anyways, bro. I was always a good kid. <laughs> look, 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 look. Listen to me real quick. I was always a good kid, even though I got into numerous and numerous of fights and other activities that honestly shouldn't have been done in the first place by me. But, but, look, I was always the one that would uh, talk to adults. Even, but I'm quiet when you first meet me. It doesn't matter what age I am. Two years old, I'm like this to my, no, if you meet me, I'm like this. All the way up to now, I rarely speak to people as is. Shoo, I barely even speak to a girl I like at this point, bro. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But I'm going to keep chugging. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. But I was always the person to say, yes, sir. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. And I was always nice. Unless she pissed me off. Which is why I think... Jail is not for me, not for this guy. No, 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 no. Yeah, that it. No, I'm good. I'm I'm okay. Thank you so very much. No, I don't watch any jail content at all. Well, I used to. I used to watch some jail content. What I used to watch, it was uh, babies in jail, I guess, like the mothers, it was the girls in jail, and then they could bring their babies and take care of them for a couple of months until they're like two years old, up until they're two years old, so they know who their mother is, and then if they're still serving time in jail, then they could, they have to take the babies away and give them to the other parent or a foster parent. Yeah. That show was crazy. I watched both seasons. It was good. It, it was good. It, it really was. Um, and then right after that, it was. Uh, I like documentaries. That's why I watch all these. Because I watch kids in jail. The ones like, yeah, like kids that got charged for charged as adults. I watched that. That 
that was a nice documentary show. And then I watched, uh, I mean, my mom used to watch First 48. Well, she still does, she does, still does watch First 48. I watch For My Man a lot now, Fatal Attraction, that type of stuff. It was, it was fire, okay? Let's be honest. Fatal Attraction is a nice show. For My Man is a nice show, too. They didn't make a For My Woman. Cause there's a lot of crazy motherfuckers that would do this for a girl. Let's be honest. We have the weekend screaming, I would die for you. And then we have Bruno Mars saying, I'll catch a grenade for you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can clearly see. <laughs> you can clearly see. This is something, something that you, yeah, something you can profit off of. Shoot, what other what other jail shows that I used to watch? Oh no no no! I watched one season of Sixty Days In, bro, and then I just stopped watching it. Hey, uh, I watched one season, and that's because it was it was a time where it was just me and my mom. So it was like, you know, I'm gonna chill with my mom, and I'm gonna I'm gonna watch her shows. I'm gonna sleep with her for a little bit, not like that. I'm gonna sleep on the floor, <laughs> I'm gonna sleep on the floor, and then I'm gonna chill with my mom. We're going to have a day together and a weekend together, you know, that type of stuff, you know. I don't know, I guess I was clingy. <laughs> I guess I was clingy, bro. Yeah, that, it kind of does make sense, but I'm going to finish this up. Pursuit of profits overshadows moral principles, <laughs> as corporate interests often prioritize ratings and financial gain over the well-being of humans. But it makes it even worse when you consider that the people they are affecting are not consenting adults. These are children. And it's being broadcasted to millions of people to watch them suffer. They are being told that this is genuine rehabilitation, and they don't really have a choice to participate. Occasionally, they rebel so much that they get kicked out of the jail, but most of the time, they are trapped with no escape. The truth is, everyone wants a quick and cheap solution to an extremely complicated and layered social problem that is juvenile delinquency. But hey, as long as it works sometimes, it's all good. Right? Beyond scary. Wow, that's... That was a lot to unpack, man. It was a lot. <sighs> I'm not fully bald. I still got hair. Okay. But, you know, it's still hair. That, that, I just can't grab it or touch it or anything, but it's still hair. I mean, you can touch it. It's not, the, it's not the same texture as my forehead is. My forehead is smooth, but you feel this. It's, you can feel the roughness on the hair. Okay. You can feel the roughness. Okay. Right. So. With that said, you guys, I know it's, it's been a minute, and I do apologize. Hopefully, I start putting more videos out. I do have Apex videos that's coming out too, but the thing is, I there's not a lot of content coming out where I can react to it and then push it out and then keep pushing it out like I used to, where I was posting every day for about a week and a half. So bear with me. I do apologize. So with that said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe out there. Drink water. It's starting to get hot. Er, starting to get hotter. And I know a lot of you are starting uh, football practices and your summer summer fall sports. So be safe. Drink water. You know all that good stuff. I'll catch y'all later. Peace. You have a good one.